Hello everyone and welcome to Italia. Okay, this is not gonna turn into the travel channel, so don't worry, I am not going to be obnoxious and show you all about where I am, unless you really wanna see it, by the way. Even though I just posted a video a couple of days ago because I had to come to terms with the fact that the telecom here in Italy does not want me to have internet in the house. So I needed to find another way to upload videos. So there is an internet cafe that's only about three quarters of a mile away and I think they're really sick of me and they cannot figure out why all I order in a bakery is bottled water, but there is no gluten-free focaccia at this point in Liguria. So until there is, I will be ordering my bottles of water and uploading my YouTube videos. Today's topic is on something that I actually wrote an article about on a really great website called trailsisters.com. The article came out last month and I'm going to link it below so you can check it out. If you are a female athlete, a runner, a trail runner, an outdoorsy kind of gal, or if you just like the idea of all of those things, you can find a lot of really great articles there from like-minded women. The topic for that article and today's video is something called Red S relative energy deficiency in sport. Relative to the energy expenditure, there is not enough energy intake coming into the body and the subsequent symptoms of that are what lead to massive problems in the entire body. If this sounds a little bit familiar to you, it is because the concept of red S has and should and will overtake the fixation that people have with this thing called the female athlete triad. Now the female athlete triad is something that has been referred to for many, many years to describe a situation where women athletes who are not eating enough end up with amenorrhea, typically stress fractures, osteopenia, and eventually osteoporosis. The problem with the female athlete triad is that it does not discuss or encompass the myriad of symptoms that affect the entire body when a person, a female in this case, doesn't eat enough, but is spending a lot of energy with exercise. So Red S certainly addresses the things like hypothalamic amenorrhea, fertility issues, and stress fractures, which are things that we know about from the female athlete triad. But what about all the other stuff? The female athlete triad doesn't even nearly address all the other problems, some of which can be, and of course, even though I'm in Italy, I'm still doing my geeky list, so, what are some of the other things that can be associated with relative energy deficiency in sport? You get a decrease in glucose utilization. That means you're gonna have massive blood sugar issues. Mobilization of fat stores. That's right, it's the endurance athlete muffin top, my favorite. You end up with a slow metabolism, which eventually can lead to looking like it's a thyroid problem down the road. You get a decrease in growth hormone, which I've actually addressed before in another video, which means that it is going to affect your body's ability to recover and rejuvenate after hard efforts, actually after any efforts. You're gonna have GI issues such as constipation, anemia, fatigue, depression, electrolyte disturbances, mood swings, and hair loss. Hmm. Eventually over time, your body's ability to respond to training and also perform properly is going to decline. And I just wanna make sure that we're on the same page here. Even if you're eating what you think is a lot and you might be at a body weight that is considered normal, if you are burning up a million calories a day because you're running like crazy or just in general exercising so much, your body is going to think that it's in a famine. So yes, amenorrhea is part of it, the stress fractures, osteopenia, osteoporosis, yes but relative energy deficiency more accurately describes all of the constellation of symptoms that a person can get. I think this is much, much, much more inclusive. It also is something that can help someone figure out what's going on with them much quicker. For example, if you think to yourself, well, gosh, I'm a menorrheic, but I certainly don't have any stress fractures and I had a DEXA scan and I don't see anything like osteopenia happening, but gosh, why am I depressed and I have anemia and I don't feel good and I'm so tired? Well, if you're actually only looking for the female athlete triad as the explanation for what's going on with you, it doesn't include all of those things. The person responsible for this hypothesis and all the research about it is a woman called Margot Mountjoy. And she is, she has a million letters and titles at the end of her name. So I can't even give you all of her credentials, but I'm going to link below a presentation that she gave a while back. 
Her information and research has been found to be so important that the International Olympic Council actually updated their papers to more accurately describe what was happening to athletes and offer advice on how to handle it. In 2014, they updated their documentation to read the following. Syndrome of Red S refers to impaired physiological functioning caused by relative energy deficiency and includes but is not limited to metabolic rate, menstrual function, bone health, immunity, protein synthesis, and cardiovascular health. So since then, the IOC has changed all of their documentation to talk about Red S and not the female athlete triad. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into this because it's way over my pay grade, truthfully, but there is evidence to suggest that it's not just women that suffer from relative energy deficiency in sport, and men also have symptoms and problems associated with the same thing. I mean, it's logical. It stands to reason that the human body is not designed to be in a constant state of caloric deficit for the output of energy. So eventually, you're going to have problems, whether you're male or female. So what does this mean for you, girl? All right, real talk here. If you were trying to ignore or trying to push away the problem of your amenorrhea by saying, but wait, I don't have the other part of that. And the female athlete triad does not extend to discuss all the other problems I have. You can't do that anymore. We actually have a name for something that potentially could answer why you're not getting a period. And as much as I hate to use the word easy because it's not easy, but it's much easier to design a plan for your recovery from amenorrhea when you understand that it comes from something very specific. And that very specific thing is a deficiency of energy. So what does that mean? I want to hear you say it all together. Eat, eat, eat. You have to eat. You have to eat more. I've been talking about this for a long time now, and I don't want to make it sound simple because we know that it's not, but the answer in this case is to take in more energy. And they even, you know, on the research, they have an equation, which is your energy availability equals your energy intake minus exercise. Hello, you're gonna feel like crap if you don't eat enough to accommodate for all of the calories that you're spending. So I don't want this video to get too long. This was just a way for me to introduce the topic of Red S, but I am going to talk about it more. There's a lot to unpack here and I'm going to leave the resources below. Follow me on Instagram, please subscribe and share these videos. If you have friends that you think can benefit from this, go ahead and share them with them. Don't forget to like this video and keep the comments coming. Talk to you guys soon, bye.